Hello, uh, it's been a while since I didn't upload any grammar lesson. Uh, instead, I uploaded lots of vocabulary videos because I wanted you to be able to compose your own sentences using the grammar rules that we have already learned and will learn. Having a sufficient uh, vocabulary will help you to master the Korean language more effectively. By my calculations, the Korean language has a little over 300 different grammar rules that you need to know in order to be able to compose absolutely any sentence in Korean. I hope that I will have enough time and energy to teach you all these grammar rules. Invite your friends and let's study together. Also, feel free to ask questions and whenever possible, do the exercises that I will try to prepare for you in each lesson. So, in today's lesson, you will learn how to use the grammatical construction umyeonsa. In English, umyeonsa is translated as while and at the same time as. Umyeonsa can be used with verbs as well as adjectives and even nouns. In this tutorial, we will cover all three use cases for umyeonsa. So, umyeonsa is used when it is necessary to indicate that two actions occur simultaneously. If a stem of a verb ends with a vowel or letter riol, then you need to use myeonsa. And if it ends in a consonant, you need to use umyeonsa. In this sentence, two actions are performed by the same person. I learn Korean and I teach English. 저는 한국어를 공부하면서 영어를 가르쳐요. You cannot use this grammatical construction to say, for example, I learn Korean and my sister teaches English. For such cases, Korean has another grammatical construction, 능동한. We will learn it in the future lessons. The performance of two actions by the same subject is a required condition for the use of this grammatical construction. Although in more advanced cases, where there is a dependence of one action on another, the subjects may be different. I'll show you one such example later in this lesson. So, there are two more sentences that need to be translated. If you would like, you can pause the video and try to translate them into Korean for yourself. So, my sister is drinking coffee and watching a movie. 제 언니가 or 누나가 커피를 마시면서 영화를 봐요. I'm reading a newspaper while having a meal. 저는 신문을 읽으면서 밥을 먹어요. In sentences of this kind, you can freely change the order of simple sentences. It won't affect the meaning. That is, you can put this sentence at the beginning and this one at the end. Same as in English, this will not change the meaning. However, uh, there are cases that I mentioned earlier. When there is a dependence on one action on another, the sentence order cannot be swapped. Let's look at one such case. As the weather gets colder, more people get the flu. In this sentence, two actions also occur simultaneously. However, unlike the previous examples, here there is a dependence of one simple sentence on another. There is the second on the first. There is the number of people who get the flu depends on how cold the weather is. The colder the weather, the more people get the flu. 날씨가 추워지면서 더 많은 사람들이 독감에 걸립니다. For now, just ignore this G. Uh, this is a particle that indicates the passive voice. We will learn it in future lessons. So, as I said, we cannot change the order of simple sentences here. If we do so, then the meaning is also going to change, which in most cases has no logic. 더 많은 사람들이 독감에 걸리면서 날씨가 추워집니다. As more people get the flu, the weather gets colder. This sentence says that the weather depends on the number of people who get the flu. And this doesn't make any sense. Therefore, you cannot swap the simple sentences, that is, change their order where there is a dependency. Remember this. Also, as you may have noticed it, in contrast to the previous examples, the subjects are different in this sentence. That is, in the first sentence, this is the weather, 
And in the second sentence, it is the people. I hope it makes sense. There is one more thing I want to draw your attention to. This is the use of the construction umansa in the past and future tenses. Here you see the same sentence in the present, past and future tenses. In English, it is almost always necessary to conjugate all verbs. Learn, teach, learned, taught, will learn and will teach. But in Korean, only one, the last verb, needs to be conjugated. 가르쳐요, 가르쳤어요, and 가르치겠어요. Remember this. Now let's uh, look at a few examples of using Myeonso with adjectives and nouns. Note that if a noun ends in a consonant, then you need to use 이 면서, not 우 면서. This construction is used to emphasize that the same object has two different characteristics at the same time. 제 언니가 똑똑하면서 예뻐요. My sister is both smart and beautiful, or smart and at the same time beautiful. 한국어는 어려우면서 재미있어요. The Korean language is both difficult and interesting. 이 문제는 어려우면서 쉬워요. This problem is both difficult and easy, or difficult and at the same time easy. 그는 제 형이면서 가장 친한 친구예요. He's my brother and at the same time the best friend. Finally, the last more advanced use of the grammatical construction 면서 is not related to simultaneous actions and is translated as although, even though, despite. This construction can be used with or without do. Let's take a look at some examples. 그는 나를 잘 알면서 or 알면서도 인사를 안 했어요. He didn't say hello even though he knew me well. 그는 돈이 많으면서 비싼 물건을 안 사요. Although uh, he has lots of money, he doesn't buy expensive things. 이것은 좋은 제품이면서도 가격이 너무 쌉니다. Although this is a good product, it's very cheap. Alright, now you know everything about 음연사. If you want to practice, try to translate the sentences into Korean and leave your answers in the comments section below this video. Don't forget to use honorific particles where it's necessary. And this is a list of new words. I will be using them in the next lesson.